so scary. All right. So we're playing the letter. Oh, I am playing the letter. I really don't have any subscribers, but I really wanted to play this. So I am playing the letter today for my channel. Um, I bought this last year in November. Uh, but yeah, I've saved it this entire time for this moment. I've played a demo actually on my phone and that is the reason why I wanted to play this game. Alright, so, okay, I'm gonna start. I'm not scared of nothing, it's just, I'm so excited to be recording and I'm nervous. Like, I'm, I'm nervous, I sound stupid right now. Alright. I'm not scared of nothing. Pussy! Frick. The Ermengarde Mansion? Ermengarde Mansion? Should I click or? I think I'll just click. It was built for Lord William and Lady Elizabeth Ermengarde of Luxbord, humble ambassadors of peace and beloved by their people. Both were well known for their compassion and generosity, never failing to extend a helping hand to anyone in need. Under the influence and wealth was what was once a small, sleepy village grew to a prosperous and bustling town. However, the seasons of joy eventually ended when the good nobles perished at the hands of a great plague. Their riches and legacy were henceforth passed on to their only child, Lady Charlotte Ermengarde. The mansion has stood since the 1620s, a witness to very long history of joy and pain. After Lady Charlotte committed suicide, the great house was eventually left uninhabited. And then, and that is where it began. Surrounding villagers spoke of seeing and hearing unearthly things, of cries and howls that filled the nights, and hear say of a mysterious woman roaming the hollowed halls aimlessly. People who dared enter its walls were simply never heard from again. Even after 400 years, these stories remain much like the house itself. Whispers about the once great house, its legend, and its curse still fall upon the villagers' ears. In spite of this, the current owners are convinced that these stories are nothing more than a hoax. With little regard for the truth, they had Briar Reality Corporation place the property back on sale. Like Pandora's box, the secrets that lie inside await to be discovered by brave souls. No matter what happens, take care not to be consumed by the curse. Good luck. Isabella. October 31st, Friday, St. Gorette High School. Oh. Isabella, are you there? I'm here. Where are you? A familiar jittery voice comes from the other end. Oh, hey Rose. I'm at St. Goretti High. Goretti. I'm glad they're speaking for me because my English has left the chat since the beginning of this video. What do you mean, what's the matter? Is the mansion silly? I'm here and you're late. Jeez, we're all shit together. You promised. Oh my god, please don't tell me you forgot. You were planning on leaving me to check this place out on my own, weren't you? You chickened out. Calm down. You know I take my promises seriously. I'd like to believe that. She sounds like Lara Croft. Why are you so surprised? This isn't the first time you've been there. I know. I just wish I could live in a place like this. It really takes my breath away. Yeah, well, I wouldn't be so sure. Rumors that say it's haunted. And you're still going, Isabella. Jeez, never mind those rumors. Ghosts aren't real after all. And even if they are, which they are not, they can't do anything. They're nothing but spirits. He traumatize you. You don't know that. They might be listening or watching right now, and they might not be happy with you enough to curse you. No offense, sweetie, but that's a bit of a stretch. Uh, believe it or not, it's better to be careful. Right. You know, not every property we sell will end up with a dead body stuffed in a sofa. Oh, so Rose is a realtor? I think that mansion is where we'll likely find another one. I can feel it. That was one time. Voice acting is actually really good, especially this rose lady. Fine. Let me just 
finish up here. I'll be right there soon. Okay, see you. Bye. She hangs up before I can respond. Ro is still charming as ever. Who was that? Who was that? I look up from my phone to see Rebecca, Becca, giving me a questioning look. Oh, that? It's just Rose. The one who trained you. Whoa. The one who trained you for your job back when you started. Finish your sentence! You're working together again? Just for this property. We've been scoping out that big mansion down Anselm Village after the renovations. Today is sort of its grand opening to the public. The RC wants to give it one last check before we let potential buyers tour it this afternoon. Hold on. Is this the same mansion you've been telling everyone about? Didn't you keep saying how it just gave you the creeps? You actually went there? And you're going back? You're going with us too, I'm pretty sure. Well, I did promise Rose I wouldn't ditch her. And besides, a job is a job. Gotta do what you gotta do to make a living. <laughs> Not if it kills you. As soon as those words leave my mouth, Becca lift, lets out a soft chuckle. I mean, no offense, but you've been freaking out ever since you got assigned to it. Did her boobs just move? I honestly thought you'd back out. Not all the time. I could really use a huge amount of cash right now, and this is just the fastest way to get it. Plus, listen to this. Briar Realty wants it sold as soon as possible, and the agent who lands the deal is going to get a huge bonus. They never give bonuses like that. Getting that would make life so much easier. They're desperate. I'm desperate. It's perfect. A sympathetic look crosses her face. You know, if you're really in urgent need of money, you could have just asked me. No can do, Becca. We ain't like that. Or Ashton. Or Ashton. We can always let you borrow, and you can pay us back whenever. I have to keep myself groaning out loud. In the years I've known her, I can already tell what to expect once she has that expression. Becca! What can I say? It's really good. She crosses her arms and grimaces at the thought. Her voice slightly raises as she begins to scold me. Rises. Sorry. Instantly, I'm reminded why Becca excels at teaching boisterous teenagers. Stop eating junk. They're cheap, but they're not good for you. You'll definitely end up in the hospital if you keep at it. I wish I had noodles right now. <gasps> Here we go again. I eat other things too. Oh, you're not my mom. I eat other things too. Yep. I like noodles. You're not my mom. Relationship updated. This or that. I press my lips together and roll my eyes at her. Uh, you're not my mom, Becca. I'm not entirely sure how I feel whenever she goes on her mother head mode. She looks entirely disturbing. Like her eyes and then the shading or whatever makeup she has around that and then her tiny lips and then her weird nose and her big head with her weird hair and then the way she's moving when she's talking anyways she means well i'm glad someone's looking out for me especially with my family living on the other side of the globe but becca's bossy attitude can be such a pain at times she's more overbearing than mama and that already says a lot you're not my mom oh that sounds very childish i should have just said i eat other things too but i'm not trying to Prove none to her. I like noodles. I didn't say I am. What? Nope. But you're acting like one. You don't need to boss me around all the time. She gives me a completely unimpressed look. I'm sorry. Immediately, I press myself for another round of repermits from her. I'm not bossing you around. I'm just telling you to at least mind what you're eating. Thanks. Remember what happened last year? Nope. Tell me. I'd want it to happen so I wouldn't have to go to that dumb mansion, but you know what? The plot doesn't allow this, alright? So I'm gonna go. No, Mom. Only a loud, frustrating sigh comes from her when she still pinches the bridge of her nose, likely to help ease a headache starting to form. I bite my lip to keep myself from laughing out loud at the image she makes, expecting her to say more. But when at last she looks up, 
She's simply carrying a resigned expression on her face. Oh, I'm serious. Not my mom, Rebecca. Maria Isabella Grace. Are you sure she's not my mom? I shut my mouth after that. Although I know she's not really angry, I don't want to push it. An angry Rebecca isn't someone I'd like to cross paths with in my lifetime. I've seen it happen and it wasn't pretty. I grumble, but she doesn't seem to care much, only giving me a small acknowledging nod. Good. Good. Look, if you need anything, tell me, and I'll help in any way I can. Isn't this... You know what? Never mind. You don't have to do this alone. Thanks, Becca. I really appreciate it, but you don't need to keep babying me. My girl does seem a little scrawny. You know what I'm saying? She needs some meat on them bones. You've been taking care of me since after I moved here. You have to take a break sometime. And before you ask again, no. You know I'm not a fan of borrowing money. Same. And I'm not going to ask you to give me what you earned hard for yourself. Ah, you and your pride. But suit yourself. It moved again, Jiggle Physics. The alpha stays on the table though. I nod in response, if only to get her to drop the topic. She's pretty nice though. You know, like she knows I don't like borrowing money. Or Isabella doesn't like borrowing money. But she still late, like, you know, leaves the offer, leaves the money on the table, not physically, but like, metaphorically. So, if Isabella really needs it, and if there's a pressing situation, she could always go back to Becca and borrow that money. But I'm pretty sure that I'll never take that offer. Ever. It has nothing to do with pride. I've simply seen plenty of times how friendships can take a turn out for the worse just because of a few unpaid debts. Oh, Exactly, especially females. Oh my god, they're just... Tss. I don't want something like that to happen between me and Rebecca. We may argue a lot about small things, petty things, but she already feels like a real sister to me. I don't want to lose that friendship over something so trivial. Becca's movements, when she takes a quick glance at something behind me, snaps me out of my thoughts. Well, enough chit-chat. Lunch is ending, and my students will be back any minute. So she teaching... At my school, or like? We can catch up later. Good luck with your clients. You better treat us to lunch or something if you get that sale. What about that shmoney you've been saving for me? We can use that. I'll pay you back. I'm drinking. <laughs> you bet. With a small smile, she returns to her desk and begins shifting through the pages of a rather thick history book. She's probably working on next week's lesson plan, or trying at least. Her eyes are distant, and she doesn't seem too attentive to what is on her page. <coughs> oh. That is not her. <laughs> As if she heard my thoughts, Becca starts coughing heavily. Her hand hastily goes to her mouth to stifle the sound. That sounds like a man. Ah, this is precisely why I followed her here. For someone who makes a habit for worrying about other people, Becca sure forgets how to take care of herself. Hey, you sure you can manage on your own? I mean, you're still a bit feverish. Ah, hush, dear. Don't you worry about me. I'll just drink some medicine and I'll be right as rain. She sounds like a grandma. Like, literally. The perfect voice actor for a grandmother. I level her with a flat look. She has had a cold for a couple of days now. Something about that strange weather not agreeing with her lately. And despite my advice to take the week off and rest, I found her apartment empty when I dropped by this morning. And she even left the medicine her doctor prescribed. Look who's being stubborn now. Maybe it's something more than a cold. You shouldn't even be working right now. <laughs> Seriously, you big baby. I'll be fine. For now, just go to work and stop making that rose girl wait for you. I'll call you if I still feel bad. And you can come pick me up if it makes you feel any better. She offers me a reassuring smile and I can only sigh. Why do I even bother? There is no stopping her once she has decided on something. Defeated, I reached the semi bag to pull out the same bottle of medicine she left earlier. Already poured? She looks at it warily when I place it in front of her. Unfortunately for her, this is one thing I'm not letting her have her way. Alright, but don't forget what the doctor said. Drink this on time. I'll see you later, okay? She ain't gonna take it. There's an amused gleam in her eyes when she shifts them back to me. Before I can retort, she casts another look at the clock. 
I take that as a sign to finally end the conversation and short my visit. With a small wave, I leave her alone to her classroom and her thoughts. I hail a passing taxi to take me to the property as soon as I leave the school grounds. The mansion is some ways out of the countryside, but I don't have trouble giving the driver directions. Apparently, everyone in Luxbourne City knows of it, including every bit of rumors surrounding the place. In fact, just the mention of his name is enough for locals to give you cautious, sidelonging glances. I learned of the hardware the first day I commuted there, and it only boosted my belief that there's something more to this house. Even the news of it being renovated and placed back up in the market has caused a big stir. Quite a stir. Thankfully, it died down a few weeks later. The place could would have become a lot harder to sell otherwise. I rub my eyes from the window once the building shrink in the, in the distance. We get a glimpse of the countryside soon, although a quick glance at my watch tells me we're still a few minutes away from our destination. Might as well get some work done. Rose did ask me to review the mansion's documents. I already looked them over last night, but you never know when things may go wrong. Life has ways of messing up like that. Halfway through reading the papers, my phone rings again. I pick it up without looking, neatly tucking it between my ear and shoulder. It's probably just Rose again anyway. That voice. Ash. Ash. Bingo. Hey, what's up? Just checking if you're still cool later this evening. Is she coming too? You mean that thing with Zach? Yeah. He even called in the middle of the night just to remind me. No, don't worry. I didn't forget. I'll be there. Cool. I'll see you later. What time do you get off? Around 5, 6 p.m.? I don't know. It's the first day of the Ermengarde Mansion's open house, and we're expecting quite a number of potential buyers. I'll be booked the whole afternoon. Ermengarde Mansion? You know, the big Jacobean mansion at Anson Village? I'm on my way oh, there right now. Oh, Jacobean. That's like... I did that. <laughs> I did a presentation on Jacobean furniture uh, in school. Once. Ash chuckles and I can't b help but roll my eyes upon hearing it. Wait. Was his name always Ashhole? It was Ash before and he called me a scary cat. I see Ashhole now? Ashhole? Stupid Ashhole, always teasing me whenever he sees a chance. I'll show him who's tough. Uh, updated journal. Oh. Did I press this? Undiscovered journal entry? To go back? What the hell? Before going to Emigrant Mansion, Isabella Santos dropped by St. Goretti High School to check on Rebecca Gales. Oh, I was reading that wrong. The former reminded the latter to take her flu medicine before leaving. On the way to the mansion, Isabella received a phone call from Ashton Frey reminding her of Zachary Gales' movie career that night. All right, well, that's everything that just happened. And what is this? Relationship. Relationship. So this is Isabella. Rebecca. Okay. Oh, I can't press anything. Okay. It takes a few more minutes until I finally reach the infamous mansion. I have to admit, the entire property does look wonderful from the outside. Yet, despite all of this, it does nothing to hide that something is just wrong. It looks the damn same, but renovations. I don't, it just looks cleaner. The surrounding area is unusually silent, and only the rustling of leaves can be heard at the occasional breeze passes. While Ainslum Village is just a few miles away, everybody keeps the distance on purpose. Perhaps out of fear, the horror of falling under the mansion's curse. That's him. Alright. Somehow it makes me feel sad. The lack of immediate human presence just makes this place all the more eerie than it has any right to be. If it's uncanny in broad daylight, I can't imagine how this place looks at night. Are you planning to go inside that place, Missy? Oh my god. The voice nearly makes me jump out of my skin. Without completely taking my eyes away from the house, I give the driver a confused nod. A beat passes while I wait for him to say more, but his only answer is non committal hum. Is a non committal hum. But literally occurs to me that he must have been waiting for his payment. I mentally slap myself for spacing out and promptly hand him the fare with apologetic look. I expected him to leave as soon as I paid him, 
but there's a hesitant expression on him, as if something hasn't been said yet. Is there something wrong? Look, Missy, I'm sure you've heard what the people are telling everyone about that place. Wow, he sounds really cool. Nobody likes to be disturbed when they're at peace, and I'm pretty sure whatever they say is in their house. Doesn't want to either. I admit they did a good job fixing it up. Yeah. But there must have been a reason why even distant relatives of the family who used to own the house never lived in there despite inheriting it. He's very wise, but nonetheless, we're still going in. No wonder they wanted to get rid of him. Maybe they just didn't like it? You never know. He drives off after, but what he said has left a foreboding feeling in my gut. Why don't I drive? I should have driven up here because as soon as the first demon drops something on me, I'm running out. But then what? I'm waiting for a taxi to come and get me in the middle of the night? No, I have had my own car and that's even better. Did, what's her name? Rose Drive? I don't see no driveway here. We'll see. I breathe out a sigh, a heavy sigh, as I approach the house. After hearing enough of the rumors, I should have expected the conversation to take that turn. But I'm already here. Backing out is completely out of the question. It's not like I have a choice anyway. If I want to get that bonus and commission one way or another, I've got to sell this property. There's other properties to sell, not this demon boating house. You want to... The door is ajar when I get to it. However, while my own copy of the keys dangle uselessly in my hand. One of... While my... Whatever. Rose must have left the door open when she arrived. Or Rose day. That's weird. We may be the only people here this early, but I've never known her as someone as careless. Entering what greets me inside leaves me gaping. Wouldn't it be empty? Why is there furniture for trying to sell this place? They've cleaned every corner, waxed the floor, dusted the antiques, searched every nook and cranny and crevice, and made it spick and span. All for the sake of making the mansion more enticing to the modern day lords and ladies. But no matter how hard they try, the mansion still looks as soulless as ever. As though it's going to eat you alive. If you ask me, they should have just listened to what other people have been telling them and leave this place alone. Some things in this world are just better left alone, never to be disturbed ever again. Rose? Wow. I call out. My voice echoes softly throughout the halls. Softly? Okay. Oh, who am I kidding? In a place this big, I don't think she'll hear me no matter how deafening the silence is. She could be all the way on the other side of the property for all I know. She oh, shoot. Quickly, I reach for my phone and dial her number. But... Has not been... What do you mean has not been recognized? We were just talking a while ago. It's not like she has been eaten by the house, right? Or or maybe the ghost did hear us talking and spared her away, right? Right? No, Isabella, don't be ridiculous. She probably just wandered deeper into the house and lost signal or something. I dial her number again, hoping the call will connect this time. But to no avail. Oh, boy. I have a very bad feeling about this. Rose? If you can hear me, please come out. Come on, Rose, this isn't funny. You know this place gives me the creeps. No answer. This isn't going to work. The place is big, she could be anywhere. So wait at the front door. I need to start looking for her. I take a deep breath before venturing deeper into the mansion. Taking a couple of steps forward, I notice something move above the grand staircase. What the hell? Rose? Rose, is that you? Not funny. I'm leaving you if you don't come out. Not coming out, huh? Fine. I'm going. Sure. Okay, that's a lie. She's my friend. I can't really leave unless I know she's alright. Growing desperate, I try to connect her number again. Come on, please give me something. Please, Lord. Yes, finally. Hello? Hello? Rose, I'm here at the mansion. Where the hell are you? She doesn't respond. There's also heavy static coming from her side. I sincerely hope it doesn't get cut off again before I have an answer from her. Rose, come on. Where are you? A few moments pass until the static eventually starts to quiet down. I'm... What? 
I'm an addict. Crap, it got cut off. Man, do I really need to go there? With how deep inside the mansion the attic is, there's barely any signal there. No wonder I can't con contact her. But why is she there? Out of all places, she just has to make me go fetch her in the creepiest rooms of this place. Is she doing this to get back at me for being late? Whatever, I'll just go. The sooner I meet up with her, the sooner I'll feel better about being here. I carefully make my way up to the staircase. My legs wobble as I mentally curse the fact that I've chosen real estate instead of picking a career that doesn't involve strange abandoned and abandoned and abandoned houses. Sorry. Upon reaching the top, the grand hallway greets me. Whew, are all the windows open? See. It branches out to the top major wings of the house. Not a house. A mansion. The east and west wing. There are two attics here, one on each side. But the east one has been converted to a storage room of all sorts, and somehow I find it least lucky for Rose to wander there by herself. Besides, she never did like going into stuffy storage rooms. So I head towards the west wing first, where a simple wooden door at the end of the hall, hall opens to a small room. Inside is another set of steps leading to the second attic. Unlike the grand staircase though, the stairs to the attic are steep and narrow, made of old stones and covered with a thick coating of dust that kicks up to the air, into the air with every step. Thank god it's still daytime. It looks like the sun's going down though. If it wasn't for the light streaming through the door behind me, I might easily stumble and fall. I thought you'd say you might easily run out of this place and leave Rose by herself. With how old the place is, there is no light fixtures to illuminate the cramped passages up. Why they didn't bother to add one here when they were motivated is scheme to me. Sheesh. They did it with the rest of the house. A small bedroom welcomes me at the end. I boo. Oh. It looks exactly as it did since the last time I've been here, full of dust, worn out, and faded by time. Odd. I thought they cleaned everything. Did the crew miss this room? Ugh. Cleansliness is least of my concerns right now. The more pressing matter is Rose. She's not here. Was I dreaming when I talked to her a while ago? Did I mishear her? No, no, it couldn't have been a dream. Does this look like an attic? This is a tiny square room. She's not in here, so turn around and go to the other one. I don't get this. After all, the creepy ambiance of this estate is doing such a remarkable job of making sure I stay alert and awake. Oh my god, I just checked the audio and hopefully I wasn't like freaking messing up the mic with how freaking close I was to it. I was pretty nervous because it's my first video. So now I just sit back, you know, I'm a little further from it. I turned down the mic, so hopefully it's fine. But let's continue. And I'm sure she said she's here. Is this a prank? Or maybe that phone call was Rose's last message to me before the curse got to her. Ugh, shut up brain, you're not helping. Don't make this scarier than it already is. But if she's not here, then where is she? Uh... What the hell was that? That's it, I can't do this anymore. I'm leaving. Ooh, I'm scared, okay. Alright, I have one hand covered my eyes. Just enough so I can see the subtitles. <laughs> we must have anger the spirits living here. I knew disturbing this mansion was a bad idea right from the start, but nobody listened. Be effing realistic, they said. They think I'm cuckoo because I believed in curses and ghosts and all that. Me and my outlandish backwater country beliefs. I've always strived to be a model employee, but not this time, no. I'm turning back for, my, for the sake of sanity. Royal Realty could find an, another agent who was more effing realistic to tour people around this haunted house. Before leaving, I take one last look at the gloomy old room. Just to check. Huh? What's this? My worries about Rose's whereabouts must have caused me to miss it when I first entered the room. But there's clearly something on the floor. It looks like... A letter? Oh, this is where the title comes in. This is where the title comes in. Alright, this isn't good. This isn't good. Lying on the ground just a couple of inches away from my feet. Out of sheer curiosity, I leaned down and picked it up. Well, I just picked it up. 
She's in game. She can't get out. Strange. Oh my god, a cinematic that I don't I don't recall seeing this the last time I was here. A few days back, me and other agents inspected the mansion to prepare for it today. I had to be the last to look inside the attic and leave, and this certainly hadn't been there before. Someone must have left this in the room since then. Did Rose leave this for me? Was she here a while ago? I couldn't have missed her though, could I? There's only a set of stairs leading to the attic. The letter isn't exactly in pristine condition. In fact, it looks rather ancient. The paper is so thin and rough, I'm worried it'll fall apart if I do so much as touch it. But with great care, I open it, and what I read shakes me to my core. What? What? Oh my God. Help me, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. Ooh. I'm scared now. This probably was a dumb idea for the first game for me to play, but... I need to see it through on. Nothing but the words help me fills the page. All of it, seemingly written with a crimson shaded pen. Or blood, but crimson shaded pen. Or blood, yep. I gulp. The same phrases go on and on until... Send this to five people or else? Why does this remind me of a little Facebook post or something? Is it, oh. Send this to this much people or your crush won't like you back or dumb stuff like that, like send this to five people or else. Or else what? Oh my god. Or else what? Don't yell at the paper. As quickly as I can, I scan the back of the paper and peek into the envelope to make sure I'm not missing out on a second page. But there's nothing. No. Oh please no. My hands tremble as dread creeps over me. The room is suddenly getting colder. I need to get out of here. Folding the paper in half, the sight that greets me the next... Oh! Folding the paper in half, the sight that greets me next has frozen me on the spot. Have me frozen on the spot. <laughs> okay. I remember this. I remember this. It's like, don't look up. Look up so I have to use my mouth. A pair of blood-soaked feet enter my field of vision, covering the gaping wounds with skin eaten away to reveal flesh, bone, and manner of things one isn't meant to see. It's too much. All of it is too much. Probably Rose! She just needs to go to, you know, the salon. You know, so they can fix up her non-existent toe nails. I want to cry, call for help, but the birds catch in my throat. Even my feet won't move, completely paralyzed out of terror. Close eyes and pray. Laura, help. Please help me. What I would do is close my eyes and pray. What she would do is be brave and look up. And that's what I did, I think, the first time we played. Oh god, okay. Uh, be brave and look up. Probably it's not even there, you know? No, no, no. No, no, what should I do? If I close my eyes, they're gonna be like, uh... I think, okay, I'm gonna close my eyes and pray. I shut my eyes tight, muttering reverent prayers out of my, out of my breath. Woo! Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Prayers taught to me as a child by my mama and papa slip out endlessly through my teeth. Because God, oh God, if you have to listen to any of my prayers, please listen to this one. And if God doesn't listen, at least I won't see the thing that kills me. Damn. She's pretty right, even though she's scared and praying. A cold comfort. I wait. And I wait some more. But when nothing happened, I dare to take a peek. Nope. No, why, why am I playing this? Why am I playing this? I don't like it. I feel like, okay, I feel like she, she's going to make it out of this because I know all her friends end up in the mansion, so she has to... Make it, oh, whatever. I want to find the ghost, the thing, whatever it is, gone. Relief washes over me as I shakily get up to my feet and back away towards the door. Wrenching it open, I slip out without a second thought and make her run for it down the stairs and onto the hallway. I take a look back to make sure it isn't behind me. You know what, um, 
Good thing I didn't look at it, because maybe she could have died. Because I know you're in charge of your life, so if I did make her look up, she probably would have died then and there, so early on in the game. Let's continue. Any other person may have stopped, dismissed it as a trick of light and an overreactive imagination. Alright. But I am not taking any chances. I am not giving that thing another chance to catch me off guard. I don't think I'll ever feel safe until I get out of here. Whatever that is, every warning bell in my mind is telling me that it's going to jump out at any moment and get me while I'm still in its place. I told them! I freaking told them! Oh man, oh man, oh man! Racing down the stairs, a breathy laugh escapes me and my shoe slips and I find myself falling. Of course. Until my back hits the ground and pain racks my body. Of course. Of course you're gonna fall. Oh shoot. My head grows fuzzy and my vision dims as I fight to stay conscious. Oh, she fell hard. She fell hard hard. Oh, just in case it was like a quick took time event. Not quick time event. Quick time choice. Huh. The last thing I see are those feet before all I know is darkness. Woo! Woo! Okay. What is this? Oh. Okay! I made it! Through the entire... Beginning. Yeah, this gonna be more of us. This guy looks. Oh shoot! Oh god, I'm such a chicken. Let me turn this down. I don't know what this is. That is Rebecca. I don't know who this is. Ugh. That's Ash. I think. I don't know. The letter. Alright. I'm gonna end it here. I'm pretty scared. Also, this video is probably pretty long. Yeah, I'm gonna end it here. Alright, thank you for watching if you got this far. Um, I'm pretty scared of this game. I don't know if I want to continue and I know it's pretty long, but I've been dying to play it and maybe it's because I'm recording my gameplay while I'm more scared, but I really want to finish it and I'm gonna try my hardest to. But if you reached this far, thank you for watching and subscribe if you want to because i want to grow my channel you know for at least a thousand subscribers because right now i'm just making videos for the fun of it with no with nothing i'm gaining nothing just wasting not really wasting time i really like doing this i'm just making videos posting it but if you really like to if you want to see more if you want to see what might happen to my channel in the future then subscribe um i'll try to get another video out as quickly as I can but as of right now I don't have a schedule maybe I'll come back with a new game scratch this one and play this one on my own time because I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna die playing this I screamed at the beginning I screamed anyways thank you for watching and I'll see you later